Good evening, welcome to the programme. Absolutely delighted to be joined tonight by a really well-known football figure who was born here in Sheffield, who still lives here in Sheffield, became a top Premier League player, but played for neither of the Sheffield teams. We'll find out exactly why, but there's also lots more to this character who's just known throughout the fabric of Sheffield football. You talk to anybody, they all know my guest this evening. And Prince William knows him as well because he was talking to him only last week because my guest tonight received the MBE at Buckingham Palace a week ago. So uh, I'm afraid it's a bit of a come down tonight. John Beresford, welcome to the programme no, from the Palace you. to Sheffield Live. Yeah, funny enough, I, I was Park Hill Flats, that's where I'm from. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit of a difference going to Buckingham Palace. Yeah, let's put yeah. it that way. We're not actually far from Park Hill Flats here. In fact, Do you know you what? I know, I said, all my family's from there. You know, my nan's lived on there from both sides of my family. It was kind of a strange one because even when I played, when I used to play at Sheffield United, uh, being a Sheffield United fan and sort of I'd meet up with my cousins after. And sometimes I'd walk back to my nan's after the game. I'd actually yeah. walk up Shrewsbury Road. Yeah, sure. right. So, yeah, Kevin King was all right with things like that. You know, if you want to meet, because he knew I was living in the city. Yeah. Uh, especially we got a good result, yeah, I'd, I'd make my way home. It's, it's a well-trodden route because I know it very well because my wife used to live there. There <laughs> you go, I tell you. I, 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 to be Park honest, it, flat, she did. I know, well, can you believe it? Back listed, in the day. Listed building yeah. now, eh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would never have yeah. thought that. Yeah, indeed. You're a bit of a listed person, aren't you? Now, a, oh, no. uh, never mind listed building, MBE, member of the British Empire. You went to your investiture last week. We're going mm -hmm. to talk about that. We're also going to talk about your relationship with one of the Sheffield Football Club managers in particular, because you, you played for him three times. I know you've got views on the Owls. You're a football pundit, uh, <laughs> ESPN, and before that it was ITV. You, you mean play... I talk rubbish, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and good at it, yeah. yeah, yeah I, okay. I know exactly what it yeah, means yeah. to talk a load of rubbish. <laughs> I've, I've been doing it for 40 years and made a little bit of a living on it, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah. Yeah. It's good rubbish, it's, though. It's, it's good bad, rubbish. It's, it's bad rubbish. That's where you got to worry. <laughs> All right, I'll take that as a compliment from you. Thanks very much. You played for Manchester City to start with, or you didn't. You were the, you were there as a kid. Mm -hmm. Barnsley, Portsmouth, Newcastle. But there's lots more to you than that. There's also Alfreton, Halifax, but most importantly of all, I'm told by one of your pals, Ian Whitehorn, uh, Bradway FC. Yeah, that's when that's when I peaked. It was. Yeah. Was it? Oh yeah, yeah. The sports ground. Yeah. Uh, I have to admit, I did turn into a bit of a diva. Uh, when Mr. Whitehorn called me up and uh, told me uh, Tufty got the job, Chris Wilder got the job at uh, Bradway, and I'd, I'd packed him playing football. My knees weren't the best. And they went, Come on, you love it. We've got a great set of lads and everything else. And uh, I was like, Where do you play? And then they told me over oh, up at the Sportsman's Ground. I was like, Yeah, pitch, pitches are decent there. So I did pick and choose. <laughs> playing away games, I was a little bit, let's have a look at the pitch and I was, yeah. I'll, pick, I'll pick and choose. But no, nah, it, was, it, was, it was fantastic times. And from Chris Wilder's point of view, I think that was his, I think that was his what, uh, peak apprenticeship. Of his peak no, of his career. No, I think nothing was his apprenticeship. <laughs> you know, he was. Like, he, yeah. you, you, st you start to see. You know, you, there's certain players. Oh, I always say, they're born to do it. And mm. at the time, I'd be, I'd be a liar if I went. Oh yeah, he'll go on and be as successful as he is now. But you could just see he, he was like a duck to water. He, he enjoyed being in charge and he enjoyed sort of like trying to work and get the best out of players. And of course, you played for him there, but you also played. Uh, well, you played with him actually at one time. You were left back and he was right back, weren't, weren't you? At one time, yeah, Alfreton, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alfreton and Halifax. So that's uh, three times. I know. I, I, can't, I can't believe you hadn't took me now. I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm he, just loosening up now. Yeah, um, left back. No, he's covered now. Think, he's missing yeah. a trick, really. Isn't he? <laughs> Why all these injury problems have been over on the right hand side, oh, right back? I know. So I know it's, you you no. kick with the wrong foot, mate. I know. <laughs> it's the story of my life. Wrong yeah. place, wrong time. <laughs> but I mean, Sheffield United, right up to date. You know, I had the absolute joy of being at Bramall Lane at, well, many times this season, but mm -hmm. Tuesday, even though they lost, was, I, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've seen, a, I've covered a 5-4 game in my career, and this, well, Sheffield United yeah. 4, Fulham 5 was absolutely remarkable. Um, but of course, that was almost the, the norm for you when you played under Kevin Cavalier, Kevin Keegan at Newcastle, wasn't it? Yeah, when you look back, um, Kevin had an idea of how he wanted to play. Um, I was literally, um, I was going to sign for Liverpool, failed a medical, and then Kevin Keegan came in uh, from nowhere. In Newcastle weren't a great team at that time, they, they nearly got relegated, uh, but Kevin Keegan being a boy here of mine, um, Jim Smith, who was my manager, said, look, go and speak to him, you'll not believe how big a club it is, Newcastle, even though you kind of get a gist of it, but you don't fully understand it until you live there. Uh, took the chance, 
Um, but the, the meeting with Kevin Keegan, he, uh, at the time, man, I, I remember him saying, we'll get, you come and sign for me now, we'll get promoted this year, we'll get in Europe next year, I'll get, the, I'll get you in the England squad. And I'm thinking, he's on something here. <laughs> and, and, but, he, but he actually believed in everything he said. He, and he had that aura about him where you think, do you know what? He's got something. And I remember, I think I'd been at the club for about uh, 18 months and we'd been promoted. The first year in the Premiership, we got into Europe and I'd also got an England squad. Mm. And he went, you didn't believe me, did you? And I said, Gaffer, you know, I says, you know, I own my hands up. But he, he, he was genius, at, but he had one way of playing and that was his, slightly his Achilles, Achilles heel at times. We would go to Ibury, Anfield, uh, Old Trafford, and there was just, I mean, people talk about parking buses. We went up and top, it was like, go on. And he, he used to just say, go and play, make it happen. And if they score one, score two, just keep going. And it, it was, I had the best six and a half years of my life of just, I couldn't wait to get up in the morning to go train. Uh, I couldn't wait to go and watch the games. And the, the place just grew and grew and grew. Yes, the people will go, yeah, he finished second twice and you know, so that type what, of thing. Yeah. And, but you know what? I sometimes look back, I don't think I would change it. The, the, the emotion, the, the fun I had was just second to none. Inspirational character. Oh, it, 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 frighteningly good. And the way his team played was an absolute joy. I, obviously, their defending is important. <laughs> uh, but you look at the Sheffield United manager you've played for three times, and the, 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 there's a little bit of that in him. He, he, ultra positive, goes for it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, Fulham didn't know what hit them the other night. Five two up and hanging on yeah, at the I end. I mean, you know, it, it's, it, 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 it's clever enough to, to play whatever hand he's got. He'll look at the players at the beginning of the season. He'll analyse who they're playing, and they'll yeah. think, right, how do I get best out of these? And if you've got enough forward-thinking players, all right, everybody's got responsibilities, um, but everybody's got to buy into it. And also the fans have got to buy into it, you know, because they've got to believe, hang on a bit, if we go one down, don't start getting on the bikes, don't start turning. Because I, <laughs> I do remember, I think, I think I went to the, when he first got the job and uh, a couple of years ago, and I think they played crew in the cup, mm -hmm. and, he was, and uh, they had a couple of bad results starting. And uh, I went to watch a game, and you could just hear there was rumblings, and, and I, I do remember it clear as you know what fans are like. Oh, I'm not so sure, you know, not, can he do it at this level? And you're thinking, you're having a laugh. He's the game, yeah. but that's but when you believe in what how he believes, if you everybody, if like I said before, I'll repeat again, if everybody buys into it, you'll be you'll be astonished how far it can go. Mm, how far can it go then? I, I, I can see getting promoted this year, not a problem. Um, it'll be tough to to go automatic. But it'd be even better, wouldn't it, to go to Wembley and do it? So um, it, I sometimes always saw it as well. I think sometimes it ruined the stars. Hat trick of promotions. I know he won't say this, and I know he won't, and rightly so. But I think people from the outside. I mean, I was I followed Newcastle uh, last year in the Championship. Um, you know, I did every home game. Uh, the Championship is, is tough, but I tell you what wins it. It's the teams that win it, not the individuals. A lot of team, a lot of a lot of good players in the Championship. But quite fragmented, and I think Wolves, I think, will will, will run away with it. Yeah, got fantastic individuals. Yeah, but but well. also they, they've got a good unit as well. And I just think beyond that, top the next eight in it, there's not a lot in it. No, there's no really outstanding team. I think Fulham have got more outstanding individuals than most teams, and they're they've underperforming changes, yeah. badly. But they mm. they show what they could do at yeah. Bramall Lane the other night. Um, to come, uh, we're going to talk about David Brooks. I'll ask you about David Brooks and George Hurst as well, because you, you know all the characters in Sheffield football. You keep close to, to both teams. I'll be really interested to, to hear your thoughts contrasting the fortunes of those two mm -hmm. outstanding young players. But before we do that, let's uh, transport ourselves back a week or so to Buckingham Palace <laughs> and uh, your investiture. Uh, and uh, you must think, oh, which royal... Which royal's going to be dishing out the uh, the, the gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll after be? a minute, I did, did, when I, did you find out? Was it on the morning or when I got there? When okay. I actually got to the palace. And when you, you got to the palace, yeah, you, found you go out. through, and I, I'm not going to lie, it, it's it's quite intimidating, but also it's quite awe-inspiring. You know, I yeah. thought it was fantastic. What? You go in, there's about forty of us, and. Uh, um, just yeah, it was twitchy. Yeah, I started oh, to just before we really relive, relive that. Your work for charity, and in particular, your work for Show Racism the Red Card mm -hmm. over many years, I think, is, is what has uh, yeah, got you Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I've been working for Show Racism the Red Card from, since 1992. Um, 
and the the approach me Shakir Islop give it how it all started how it all came about Shakir Islop was one of the late, most laid back uh, players I've ever met from Trinidad and Tobago and he was in a, a petrol station in Newcastle and uh, there was not a lot of black players around at that time and there was a f three or four lads shout, started to shout a bit of abuse at him mm. and all of a sudden as they've shouted it they then realized it's Shaki Hislop <laughs> you won't believe it they went and asked him for an autograph yeah. which he can as you can guess his reaction was could you please go away yeah yeah and then he was telling this story and he, he uh, Jed Grebby who's the who's the real founder of it started to talk about certain aspects of you know it needs to be addressed, you know. And it's a lot. More, it's just education. It's getting. It's, it's getting to the kids at the right time for them to understand what what racism is all about. You know, it's not. It's not. It's not right to, to be screaming abuse. And I, I put my hand up and I said, when I used to go and watch Sheffield United as a kid, and if there was a black ref or a black player, you know, the, the chance would be going, and I'd be joining in. But I'd be just joining in, as in the, okay, I'm one of the lads, you know, we're the gang. Mm -hmm. And then you start, when you start playing with different players, when I started playing England youth, play for like Darren Beckford, who had played at Man City, and you start to room with people and you, and you listen to their stories and you go, wow, you know, the, you know I, I've never had to walk down a street and actually cross over thinking there's a group of, play, a group of people actually just having a go at me for one reason or one reason only, mm. the colour of my skin. I think things have moved on now with uh, Islamophobia and things like that. It, it, it's, it's moved on so much. But yeah, I, I've just tried to help and just educate well, kids. A bit later on, we'll, we'll talk about how you've helped and what you've done and you've been into schools and you've made presentations, mm -hmm. things like that. But let's, let's just go back to that highly deserved moment and wonderful right. moment in your life. Let's have a quick look here uh, at you receiving the uh, MBE. There we are from, I think they, he's the Duke of Cambridge, isn't he? Prince exactly, William, yeah. uh, to, to give him his other title. And there you are looking as resplendent as you I'll are tell tonight. You what, yeah. Try my best there. Yeah. But I tell you what, another one six foot above, isn't he? another one that looks smaller. <laughs> but yeah, he was, it, when, we, when we got into, uh, when we all met, they said, uh, just to let you know today, it's Prince William. Mm. And we, it, I was kind of like biggest Cheshire cat, big smile, and the uh, the guy who was sort of like taking all the details just went, just to let you know, they give you like you've got like a little bit of run, <laughs> a run through of when you approach, you wait for him to shake your hand, you nod, you know, and you, and I'm thinking, don't cock this up, Bez, you know, and it's in my head, and then I'm thinking, right. but then he also which threw me, he just went, by the way, he does like to chat, he will chat, and I'm thinking, he yeah, was. he's gonna go, yeah, yeah, all right, well done, ever so, you know. Very, very good, you know, on you go. And uh, I remember sort of my time coming and you can feel yourself and the the place where you are, it's, it, honestly, it's magnificent. Uh, everything you could wish for, if, if somebody said this is a royal, a royal, <laughs> a royal, it's not, it's hard to explain, it's like a chapel, but there's just, it's just, you know, the way that everyone's dressed. Uh, fantastic for myself, you know, my, I've got my, my daughter, my wife, and my mom, who's just, She's bawling her eyes out and all that type of thing. She, I can't believe a son of mine's here and all this type <laughs> of thing. But then, yeah, he, he, I literally approached him and he just said, yeah, can you just give me a little bit of an idea of what you do with the, with the charities and then show her some red card. Um, I'm just saying, you know, I use football as a tool to try and get to the kids. And he went, I played at Newcastle United. And I'm thinking, <laughs> he doesn't know that. And I, I, never, I remember saying, you know, you're either well-educated or well-informed. And he just... Did he know you play for Bradway? He didn't mention didn't that, mention did he? I didn't even. I, I was waiting to say you're a blade, aren't you? Aren't you? That's where it gave me yeah, a little that's what I nod and a wink. Yeah. Blade around. But uh, okay. yeah, and then he just then it, as I'm chatting, you know, it just and as I say, you're Newcastle United. I'm thinking, okay, and he just went, and I just think we're doing the World Cup, and I'm kind of going, what as a team, or do I think we'll have problems with the fans and everything? And all of a sudden, it's all of a sudden you're having a you, you're kind of forgetting. He's putting you all at ease, and you have the best. And I'm chatting away as though you're chatting with a mate. So I'm like. Um, me and Bill, nah. <laughs> so, and honestly, it, it took me by surprise. And he, he wanted to know, you know, do, do we think we'll do all right? I'm saying, I don't think we'll win it, but I think we'll have a good go. And I'm saying, my problem is, I hope that the fans don't get caught up in trouble because there is that element out there. And it was just, yeah, it was fantastic. You've been out with a, for a pint with him since. I tell you what, I think he'd be, do you know what? He comes across, and, and, he, and his brother too. I think they've just done magnificent for, for the Royal Family because I think they've brought, you know, people like ourselves into, in, into into their world and vice versa. Mm. I think they understand that, uh, uh, you know, 
we before he always see his maybe his dad has been a bit aloof and that. No, he, he was honestly like a, a proper bloke. Sounds like a chat show you had down there. Hey, well, I, you won't believe it. I would have liked to have been the one behind you because it, it sounded like you were talking for five or ten minutes hey, there. Well, it, it, it was only, I pro but it wasn't just me. I, I think he gave everyone the time. And, and I just, as I say, I, I couldn't, you know, couldn't hold my hands no. up to him enough. What a wonderful day for you. Mm -hmm. a wonderful memory. Perhaps talk more about that in part two. Just winding up part one, also in part two, I'm going to ask you about David Brooks, among others. But just of Sheffield Wednesday interest, obviously to balance it off, George Hurst and the contrast couldn't be mm -hmm. more at the moment. You've got two young England stars mm -hmm. there. One's playing and thriving. The other one's stagnating. Well, we hope he's not stagnating, but he's not playing for his club. He's only playing mm -hmm. for young England uh, teams at, at the minute. There's a yeah. contract dispute that everybody knows about. What do you What do you make of the situation? I mean, I only get the. I mean, I'm good friends with his dad, and uh, and he, he, it's not me talking out of turn. Uh, I just can't, I just don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. You've got a diamond at the club. You've got a local lad who loves the club, who's flying. He's, he's, uh, the last sort of 18 months, he's burst onto the scene. Um, Sheffield Wednesday, from me on the outside, should be bending over backwards to make him happy. Um, to, to show that if you do well, you know, you, you, you make progress. There is a contract dispute. That happens in, in, in from any level at any other club. But for a club then to go, by the way, we're not, you're not going to play, it is, it's, it's idiotic. It just doesn't make any sense. So it's only for, it's only in any sense, from what I can gather, um, he's going to play more times for England than he is for his club. I don't think even, I don't think the club are even going to play him. And to do that, um, if I was saying, if I was a player, as in being a young lad as well, when you're in that position, I would be a little bit. Do you know what? Then shove it. If you're not, if you're going to treat me like this, why, why should I stay at a club like this? This, this is my opinion. I'm not saying this is yeah. George Ursus, but it's not sending a good, good vibes out to the rest of the players because he's still going to be going, he's still going into train. Um, George is a good lad. He's not, he's not, he's not arrogant. He's, he, he works hard. He, he, he loves the game. But what's happening though? He's going to finish up seeing his, the season out. Maybe go to January, um, where, where they can maybe start talking, or he'll get to end of the season when his contract's up. It'd be a bit of a tribunal, maybe get 500, 600 grand for him, whatever it may be. What a waste. What a waste of six months for George. What a waste of the amount of money that uh, Sheffield Wednesday could have got, because they'll get a lot more money if they'd have looked after him. Whoever is making this decision, is, I, I'd love to sit down with them and just say, what are you doing? This is, this, you're, doing, you're doing the club and a player just no service whatsoever. There are no it's ridiculous. Winners. There are no winners in this situation at the moment. There are also two sides to every story. Mm -hmm. You hear about figures banded around, maybe asking for, for more than he should be. But then again, you know, you'd, you'd think you'd meet in the middle, wouldn't you? <laughs> you really would think you'd meet in the middle. Even if he was, and I, and, I, and I know for a fact he isn't. But the point of yeah, it is, well, even if he wasn't, the point is, you still, you, you were wanting playing. For me, he should be even be on the bench. You know, there's times when. You need a lad to come on and liven the place up, and and I just think to myself, I, it, as I said, the, I don't know how much money, how much say the manager has because surely the manager would want. He's got to none. Go. I think he's been told. Well, we're parking. It seems to me we're parking off this player. Yeah, it seems to me. Which is a great shame. And I, 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 I take your point. Uh, apart from anything else, contract disputes happen. But this this player is under contract at Sheffield Wednesday, mm -hmm. and in my opinion, just you know, just chipping in with an opinion mm -hmm. here. He should be treated the same as any other under contract course, yeah, player, yeah. and you play him because yeah. that's that's shouldn't be personal. That's business. Well, this that's that's, that's that's how that's it seems. You. That's and I, I'm, I'm with you. It seems to me it's now gone like a personal issue, but I don't think it's a personal. Issue. I mean, if if George Urs had gone, by the way, you're not giving me what I want. I refuse to play. I say throw the book at him. Yeah. He's going. I want to play. I yeah. want to play football. Please let me play. I'll go on loan. I'll do anything you want. I just want to play football. And if I do really well, you can then make money on me. So, if, if he, and then whether he's offering, he wants ten quid or hundred quid or whatever he wants, and he, and you don't you don't agree with, it, fine. Oh, but right. still make him, still treat him as a football player. Well, thanks for your candid and forthright opinion there. We'll have more of the same after the break from uh, John Beresford. Got more than I bargained for there. <laughs> thank, thank you, John. James Gregg will join us, rounding up all the other action. Plenty more fascinating chat to come from John Beresford here. See you in five. See you then.